Hello, my front porch friend. Oh, it's good to be with you today. Palmer and I are actually on top of Prayer Mountain. Well, if you saw it, you'd probably call it Prayer Hill. <clears throat> but that's just not quite majestic enough for how special this place is to me. So I call it Prayer Mountain. It's one of my favorite places to be with you. For many reasons, actually. Just year-round, the sights that are just so beautiful and the sounds in the distance. But most of all, just the nearness of the presence of God that just seems to rest on this place. It's held so many epic encounters with God for me. So today, because of the significance of this word, I wanted to come here to share it with you. So right from the very beginning, I just wanna ask you to share this word today with others that I believe it's important for them to hear it. And also comment throughout this word today. Let me hear from you and know what God is speaking to you. Because in times like these, we need each other. And I'm glad we have each other. This word is very important. And I just want to share with you right from the beginning where this came from for me this week. I have a spiritual son, a very just a young man that's so powerful in God, his walk with the Lord. Is, is deeply impacting. He is actually the youth pastor of the youth at Ramp Church and at our ministry. And he is uh, on my staff. He's like a son to me. His name is Chase, Chase Durkin. But Chase, the Lord often speaks to Chase through dreams. And over this past weekend, Chase had a dream that he sent me. And I knew that it was a word from the Lord for you and for me. And I want you to listen very, very carefully. And we're going to discuss some things about it as it pertains to you and me. Here's how it starts. I'm just going to read it word for word as he sent it. All right. Chase says, I had a dream last night. In the dream, I knew I was at Camp Ramp, which is where I am right now. In the dream, I knew I was at Camp Ramp. I knew I was there to climb Prayer Mountain. But before I could get there, I noticed that there are thousands of yellow snakes everywhere, in the trees, hiding in the dirt, filling almost every space. As I'm standing there, I hear the voice of the Lord tell me to gather the snakes into a pile and burn them, that I was not to kill them one by one, but all at once. I then gathered them into a pile and burned them. I then head to Prayer Mountain, and when I get to the top, I see that the whole top of the mountain is on fire. And as I get closer to it, I see Jesus standing in the middle of the fire. I knew that I'm supposed to get to him, but I'm not sure how. Jesus then looks at me, and I realize the key to get to him is written on my arm. My eyes then fall on a tattoo that he had on his arm, or actually has on his arm, that says, fully given. I knew it was the key. I then step into the fire with Jesus. And as I'm standing there, I am seeing these massive dark clouds forming in the sky and the wind beginning to blow. And I knew a massive storm was coming. Jesus then speaks and he says to me, do not let your heart be troubled. But it was hard to keep my eyes off of the massive size of the storm. Then Jesus says, there is another wave coming. I ask him, what is in the wave? And he answers, fear and anxiety. He then points to a radio tower that is off in the distance. I know the waves were coming through the sound waves of radio, media, and news. I then look at him and he smiles and he says, guard your heart. As soon as he says this, it starts raining and the fire is going out around me and he leaves. I knew it was the beginning of the storm 
and the waves being released. He said, I then look at the radio tower and I see a red light beginning to blink and I know the sound is being released. I knew I had to cover my ears and leave and I wake up from the dream. Now, when I heard this dream, I knew we have to hear this dream rightly and we have to respond correctly when the Lord speaks to us in many ways. And anything we ever hear from God, no matter what form it's in, we know that it always has to line up with this word. And of course, this dream does. First of all, in interpreting the dream briefly, let me just say to you that in this dream, as we've talked about it, yellow snakes represent fear. And the radio tower represents, as the dream said, media and the message of fear that is coming through all different forms of media. Chase says to me in the interpretation of the dream, and I wrote this down because it was, I heard it so significant for you and me. Chase said, I was there to pray, but fear was in the way. I was there to pray, but fear was in the way. I want you to remember that because honey, my dear friend, you and I are called as intercessors, as watchmen on the wall for the hour that we are living in. That's why we have front porch friends. You and I cannot be deaf when the Lord is speaking to us in this way. We've got to hear what he is saying and be wise stewards, discerning rightly the times that we are in. Why? Because our families are at stake, our children are at stake, our grandchildren are at stake, our cities, our nation. You and I, the intercessors, the watchmen, must hear what the Lord is telling us. And this is what I heard today. And this is what he told me to share with you. Please listen carefully. I believe in interpreting this dream, the first thing that we need to take a take to, to in heed to is that there were snakes everywhere, yellow snakes representing there is fear everywhere around us right now. And, and we'll, we'll talk about where that comes from in a minute. But there is fear around, ar around us everywhere we look. There's opportunities for fear. And the Lord is telling us, don't just destroy these fears one at a time. You do it all at once. How in the world, when fear is so rampant, how do we destroy it all at one time? Well, I'm thankful, so thankful. First John 4, 18 tells us, perfect love cast out fear. How do you get rid of fear all at one time? It's perfect love. Which, I, you know, you and I talked about this one time recently. Recently, that, that that's odd to me because you would think the weapon against fear would be like faith or some other powerful weapon of like, you know, determination or, or, you know, but, but love, perfect love cast out fear. How is love a weapon against fear? So glad you asked because the Lord has shown me recently and I want you to listen. How does perfect love cast out all fear? Because remember, first John four sixteen says, God is love. God is perfect love. And I love this too. First John 4, 16 says, or 14 says that in love, there is no fear at all. In other words, you want to you wanna know how to cast out fear? Get inside love. Get into a place where there is no love. You want to get rid of fear in your life? You want to get rid of fear so that it doesn't hinder you in prayer? Because it will. You want to get rid of that fear? Get inside perfect love. Because God, first John, 4, 16 says, God is love. God is perfect love. And in love, in God, there is no fear at all. That's how you use love to cast out fear. It's inside God. I love that. And Chase said too, uh, that the, the top of prayer mountain was burning. Why? Because Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 12, let me read this. Hebrews 12, 29 says that our God is also a consuming fire. So how do we get to that place where we can get inside of God and inside of love? Oh, according to even to the stream, but most of all, according to the word, it's in the place of prayer, in the place of burning prayer. Where is God? How do I get inside perfect love? How do I find God? You'll find him in the place of prayer. You'll find him according to Psalms 91, one in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
Say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. I know he will deliver me. That's how you stay in a place without fear is you stay inside of God. Where is God? In the secret place. He's in the secret place of prayer. You stay in a place of prayer. You stay in a place of intimacy with God. And did you notice that in the dream, Chase was like, well, how do I get to God? I can't get to him. And the Lord spoke to him through just a glance and a look and told Chase to remind him, the answer is on your arm. It's tattooed on your arm. And the answer was two words, fully given. In the days that we're living in, honey, how do we stay in a place without fear? We've got to be fully given to God, not part-time Christians, not Sunday morning go visit God Christians. Come on, not occasional Christians. We've got to be people that are fully given. Everything in our lives, fully given to God. You want to stay inside God? You want to stay inside this secret place? Then you are fully given. And when you are fully given, you will live in that place of intimacy with God. Come on, I love that. And in Matthew 6 and 6, it says that in the place of prayer is where we find God. He is in the secret place where you shut the door to the world. Go read it, Matthew 6, 6, and you'll find God dwelling there in the secret place of prayer. There is no fear there. That's where you cast out fear. You, you got fears you're dealing with today? Then you go get into a place of prayer, get into the place of the presence of God, and you'll find those fears just melt away because fear cannot stand in the presence of God. That's how you've got to get rid of these snakes of fear in your life. That's feeling, you feel like are surrounding you. Go get with God. Start praying right now. And not just one time. Every day, every day, every day, every day. You've got to go get into the secret place with God every day. Whatever it takes, you've got to make time for it. It's your survival. Now, in the secret place with God, you're going to develop, I love this, the intimacy of friendship with God. That is where he begins to tell you his secrets. God has things we need to know. And how do you receive God's secrets? In the secret place. How do you hear the secrets of God, the heart of God, in the secret place, in the heart of God? Listen, that's what happened with Abraham. Abraham had so walked with God in the secret place and in intimacy with God that God just begins to call Abraham his friend. So much so that when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of a nation's sin, because of a city's sin that had risen up before God, God said, I can't do this until I talk to my friend Abraham. I'm going to have to talk to him about it first. See, that's what happened in Chase's dream. The Lord came to Chase in a dream and to you and me through this dream. And he says, I need to talk to my friends. I need to talk to my intercessors, which was what Abraham became for Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. He began to intercede for a city. I believe God is coming to us today in the secret place, just as he did. And he says in the secret place, come up here. How do I get there? Fully given. But come on, we step into his presence. And what does God say? He begins to show us in the secret place what's coming, a storm. A massive storm, a storm that's so overwhelming, Chase said, I couldn't hardly get my eyes off of it. And the Lord told him, there's a storm coming. And the Lord, here's the way the Lord put it. There's another wave coming. And then the Lord says to Chase, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. And Chase said, what's in the wave? Fear and anxiety. And then the Lord says this, guard your heart. Honey, for whatever it is this means for us right now in our nation, in the, wor in, the, in the world globally, in our nation, and even in our families, there's a storm. We know that. And Chase said it, is, it had already begun to rain. We can feel that. Chase said the wind was already beginning to blow. It's not like the storm is coming way in the distance. No, the storm was right there. It was already on him. And I think right now you and I know, all, we, we see it every day. There's a storm. It's a massive storm. It's been here already for a couple of years, but the Lord is telling us that have an ear to hear. There's another wave coming. What do we do about this, God? What do we do? He gave us the answer. First of all, keep fear out. Don't let your heart be troubled. Keep fear out. Guard your heart. Guard your heart from what? what do, how do we do this? How do we guard our heart? He tells you, guard your heart from sound waves. This is what the Lord told me to tell you today. These sound waves are what you hear. Because what you hear will either bring you into fear or it will bring you into faith. Because remember, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing the word. When you hear the word of God, you hear faith. 
When you hear the, 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 the word and the voice of this world, you have fear. So what you hear matters that much. You've got to guard what you let come into your heart through what you hear. Because your heart will be affected by what you hear. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 24 that in the last days, thank you, that men's hearts will fail them for fear. Because you've let fear come in, your heart will fail. Now you've got to watch. You've got to guard your heart by guarding what you hear. Now listen to me. The Lord says this to me to tell you. What you hear of this world. The voices of this world, watch, that are influenced by the God of this world, which is Satan. So the Bible says Satan is the God of this world. Whenever we allow that fear to come in and we are listening to the voices of this world, when you hear a voice that has fear in it, it is the voice of the God of this world. The voice of the stranger. Come on. Matthew 10 says that, that the voice of the shepherd is the voice that we follow. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd and my sheep know my voice and the voice of the stranger, they will not follow. If you know the voice, it's, it's what people say. Oh, you hear from God. That's weird. No, I think it's weird if you don't hear from God and claim to be a Christian because he says his sheep know his voice. We just got to know that we recognize the voice we're listening to because they're the voice of our shepherd. And then there's the voice of the stranger. At least it should be the voice of the stranger. What is a stranger? How do you define a stranger? A stranger is someone watch that you do not know. That's what a stranger is. But unfortunately, I'm concerned right now that... We have become so familiar with the voice of the stranger that he doesn't even sound strange anymore. We've allowed the stranger to speak so much that we've grown accustomed to his tone and to his language. So much so that the stranger has become the familiar voice and the voice of the father has become the stranger. Even so that when God speaks, even the church says, well, that's a strange voice because it doesn't, it, because that voice is not what I want to hear. Oh, that's a strange voice because that voice is not saying what our culture is saying and we need to blend with the culture so we can win them. Oh, no, no. It's the voice of truth that wins them, not the voice of the liar, not because we compromise with the liar that we can win them. So too many times the church is saying, oh, that voice, that voice is strange because it not only is it not what I want to hear, it, it's not what, what everybody's saying on Facebook. Oh, that voice is strange. No, no, no. That voice is strange because it's antiquated. It's too outdated. That voice is old fashioned. As the kids would say, oh, that voice is so yesterday. No, that voice is eternal. And that is the very plan of the enemy to get us so worn down by what we're listening to. In fact, Daniel 7.25, and I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Daniel 7.25 says that in the last days, the plan of the enemy will be to wear out the saints. And how does he wear, come on, how does he wear out the saints? He gets us so worn down by what we hear on the news and what we read on Facebook, what everybody else is telling us is the way it's things should be. And he starts making us feel like we're so outdated. We're so out of touch and we're so off and we're so wrong that we start feeling like, well, you know, am I, am I the one that's wrong here? No, no, that's the plan of the enemy to just wear you down, wear you down until you start accepting the voice of the stranger as the voice of truth. So much so that the church itself begins to believe the lies of the enemy because his voice, the voice of the stranger becomes more familiar to us than the voice of our father. Why? Because we're spending more time listening to the voice of the enemy than we are listening and devouring ourselves in the secret place of prayer and with the word of God. No, we're spending more of our time watching Facebook and watching the filth on the news and the filth in the media and social media's opinion and everybody else's in the culture's opinion that we've lost. We've lost the intimacy of the truth that comes from this uncompromising word of God. No, this voice 
is the voice we have to follow. This is the voice of life. The honey, this is the voice that saves not only us. This is the voice that will save this generation. This is the voice that loves with perfect love. This is the voice that will save. Come on, John 10, 10 says the enemy has come to steal, to kill and destroy our children, our families, our marriages, our nation. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. No, we can't become familiar with the voice of the stranger and accept his voice as truth and as a lie. No, that's the voice Eve heard in the garden. That's the voice that looked at Eve and said, did God really say? Come on. He comes as a deceiver and we've got to be wise. That's why in Chase's dream, he says, guard your heart. How? Guard what you hear. How? Stay in the secret place with God. And in the dream, that tower, that radio tower that was beginning to blink the red light, the Lord says the next wave is going to come with fear and anxiety in it. Where is that coming from? From from the sources of media that's filling our minds, our ears, our spirits, and ultimately our hearts with the fear that comes from hell itself. Fear is a doorway to the enemy, just like faith is a doorway for God to get through. And bring miracles. Fear is a doorway the enemy gets through in our lives to destroy our children, to destroy our families. Honey, you've got to keep the door shut to fear. And you've got to keep the door open to the voice of God. I pray that you hear me today. My heart's so gripped with this word. Because we've got to recognize the voice of the enemy that's coming through those sound waves. Why? Why does that matter so much? Because there's a storm coming. And I'll tell you right now, there's a storm here. And it's too late to say, oh, it's coming someday. No, you look up because there's dark clouds of storms. And we've got to know what to do in this hour. But let me tell you something. We don't have to fear the storm. Jesus never did. No. In fact, in Chase's dream, he smiled. He didn't look worried about the storm. Chase was worried about it. Jesus just looks at him and he says to Chase and to you and me, don't let your heart be troubled. There's another wave coming. Just guard your heart. Just guard your heart. How sweet of our friend. He tells us what's coming. He tells us not to be afraid. Oh, no, no. This is not his first storm. He tells us very clearly in his word how he handles storm. Mark's storms, Mark 4, 35. The Bible says there was a big storm coming in the natural sense. What was Jesus doing? He was sleeping. Disciples wake him up. Don't you care about this storm? He gets up and he stops the storm with his word. And then he rebukes the disciples that they didn't do it when he had already told them how. In Matthew 14, 22 through 27, another storm, Jesus spent time first with the Father in the secret place all night long in prayer. Then he looks out and there's a storm coming and the ones he loves are in the ship just like our families. And they were the ones in the boat out there. His disciples that he loved were out there rowing and rowing and rowing, scared, 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 full of fear. And Jesus, the Bible says, starts walking on the waves and the water of that storm. And he's given us that kind of authority in the spirit through prayer, that we are not to be afraid. That storm didn't didn't scare Jesus. He went and rescued those he loved by speaking peace to the storm around them. That's the authority God's given you. Our friends, our children, our cities, our nation is in a boat of fear. You and I need to be coming from the mountain of the high place with God where he dwells in the secret place like Jesus did all night in prayer and coming down into the storm right in the middle of the storm and not being afraid and gripped by it, by what's coming on our nation. We just need to be the ones that's come from the presence of God And we speak peace to our families. We speak peace over the circumstances to our children. That's what the authority God's given you. That's why you matter. Lord, I pray for my friend. I pray, God, that this word will be burned into his or her heart. I pray they will hear it today. And I pray, God, I thank you that you gave us this amazing word. I thank you, God, that you spoke to us today so clearly with your word. And Lord, we hear it. We hear it loud and we hear it clear. And Father, I pray today that we will act on it in faith. I pray that in the days of the storm that we are in, or even yet to come, I pray in Jesus' name that we will be those that live by your spirit and by your voice and never the voice of the enemy. God, Go get our prodigals today. 
Bring them home, bring them home, bring them home. Delivering our marriages. I declare healing into the bodies of my front porch friends right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, over their life, I declare fear is being cast out now by perfect love in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, my dear sweet friend. Please comment below. We've got to stay together in times like these. Let me know what you're hearing. Let me know what you need in prayer so we can be praying for you. All right? Share this word with a friend today. I'll talk to you next week. Until then, from Prayer Mountain.